I want to introduce the idea of vector valued functions by starting with a conversation about parametric equations and to start even in the plane. So let's take this set of parametric equations, x equals cosine t and y equals sine t with the parameter interval from zero to two pi. Well, I hope we recognize this as a set of parametric equations that will generate the unit circle. In particular, the unit circle would be traced out counterclockwise on that interval of t. The reason we know that this set of parametric equations satisfies the unit circle is that cosine squared plus sine squared is always 1. Well, cosine squared would be x squared. Sine squared would be y squared. So x squared plus y squared is 1. So every ordered pair that comes from this set of equations satisfies the equation of the unit circle. Okay, so parametric equations generate a plane curve. Now I want to consider a vector. I want to consider the vector that points from the point O, the origin to any point P on that curve. So I'm going to call that vector R. So R is the vector OP. I plug in a time, I plug in a value of t, and I get out this vector that points to a point on the unit circle. And I could even write down that vector in component form, cosine minus zero, well that's cosine of ti, plus sine of tj, and those are just my x and y from my parametric equations. But now I've written them down as this vector that points from the origin to a point on the curve. We call this function a vector valued function because for every value of t, we get a vector. We also call it a position vector because for every value of t, it points to a point on the curve. And so this is another way of thinking about this parametric curve, right? Because as my vector points to points on it, we could imagine it tracing out the curve. So let's move this conversation to space. We'll start in a familiar place, letting x equal cosine and y equal sine of t. And let's let z equal t. We can start in a familiar right-handed coordinate system. And right now we can imagine z being the axis that comes straight out of the board, right? My right-handed coordinate system, z is coming straight up at the camera. And I wanna see if I can think about what this set of parametric equations is doing on that same parameter interval. Well, if I was just looking straight down the z-axis and just paying attention to what happens in the plane, I would just see a unit circle get traced out. Or if I was ignoring what happened in the z-direction. In fact, this set of parametric equations still obeys, still lies within whatever this equation generates in space, right? Plug x in for x, plug y in for y, it doesn't matter what z is, and I get cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. This is the equation of an infinitely tall cylinder. So the set of points that this traces out has to lie on this infinitely tall cylinder. So let's imagine that I have my unit circle drawn there, and I'm thinking about this set of parametric equations. And whatever curve I'm getting ready to trace out has to lie on a cylinder. So I'm borrowing a graduated cylinder here, but the set of points I care about has to lie on this cylinder, right? Because x squared plus y squared is still equal one, all right, t, z equals t. As I spiral around my unit circle, the value of t goes from zero to two pi. So it increases. I start out at z equals zero, so the initial point of the curve should be right here in the xy plane. But after that, my curve starts to rise. I get halfway around, and I should be pi units above the plane. And then I get the whole way around, and I'm two pi units above the plane, right above my initial point, because I should have come full circle on the unit, around that unit circle. 
And so if I tilt my axis, this should generate a helix. So what we have here are parametric equations for a helix. There's a GeoGebra link under the video so that we can talk about or see better this helix and you can tilt it around. But very literally, it is just a spiral, spiral going around that cylinder. I have another way of generating that helix. One of the nice things about the unit circle is that its circumference is 2 pi units, right? The circumference should be 2 pi r, the radius is 1, so just 2 pi. Z also rises to a height of 2 pi. So if I imagine breaking the circle and opening it up and then looking at the helix, it would just be a straight line. So what I have here... I'm imagining that this orange and blue stripe is my helix. This interval that's 2 pi long is actually the circumference of the circle opened up, and then this is the height z. So if I just fold this back around to form the unit circle, I have my helix. And one of the nice things about this is if you look straight down the z-axis, you actually should see a circle. And if I could hold that still under, right under the camera, you would. Because in the x and y direction, I just get parametric equations for the unit circle. Right, because in the letting, ignoring z, I just spiral around the unit circle. What I'd like to do now is think about what happens if I think about the y and z equations together. Right, like I was looking straight down the x-axis and I only was able to observe the behavior in the y-z direction. Well, in the y-z direction, the z-axis is just t and the y-axis is sine. So I should see something that looks like a sine wave, except for going up the z-axis. And if I hold this just right, we see that. And that was upside down to the camera. I see that sine wave going up the z-axis. If I was to imagine looking right down the y-axis and I could only observe the behavior in the x and z directions, I should see something that looks like a cosine wave going up the z-axis. And that would look something like this. I literally see that cosine shape being traced out if I'm looking straight down the y-axis. All right, so there are, there is a space curve generated by that set of parametric equations. The same way as in the plane, I could imagine that as a vector function, a function that points from the origin to a point on that helix. And so the vector valued function that generates that helix is this one. This vector points to points on that helix, and we can imagine it tracing it out. So every time I have a set of parametric equations, I could imagine a vector function holding those in its components, pointing to places on it. I can kind of use the ideas interchangeably. Okay, so functions like this, r of t, which have components f of t, g of t, and h of t, where t is on some parameter interval, so t is in some interval, right? My component functions are parametric equations that generate a curve. This vector points at points on that curve. The functions on the inside, the component functions, are what we call scalar functions. These are the functions we're used to, right? You plug in a value for t and you get an f of t, a number, a scalar. Check out the links below the video for some links to GeoGebra to help you better investigate the ideas of vector-valued functions and curves in space.